Hey everyone, welcome to the newest video on the channel and today I'm going to be showing you how I painted Jamie Lannister for Song of Ice and Fire Miniatures game. Now this is the figure that comes in the starter set um, and I've not painted it for ages because I've never really used him but now all of my units are done I've got around to doing all the characters and this is the first one that I'm going to be doing so if you like the way that he looks please consider liking and subscribing and let's get straight into the video. So as with any of my character models, I start with the eyes. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll notice that I do the same process on all of these characters. I don't do it on the rank and file troops unless um, I really want to. But with the characters, I, I always try to do it if it's easy enough to do. So what you end up doing is starting with a bit of white and painting the pupil on either side of the uh, sculpted detail. Now you want to be using a small brush for this uh, just to keep it as neat as possible. Um, you see I kind of come over um, the area again with a black paint if I need to just to neaten it up and that's the eyes done. Now once those are done I come in with the flesh tone now as you can see I've got all the colours out here um, which I'm going to be using for the flesh tone and this is the same that I use for all of the characters now. If you're doing rank and file troops you don't really have to use all of these colours and you don't really have to use all of these colours um, for our characters if you don't want to. Um, you can stop at any point in time if you like. Uh, what I generally suggest when painting any character is just to paint the skin tone to a higher level than you normally would just so that they kind of stand out a bit more. And also, if you don't normally do it and you want to try it, it kind of takes your painting just to that next level. So you see that I'm using a relatively uh, detailed brush at this point in time and I'm focusing obviously on all the skin areas, trying not to get it on any of the parts where I painted the eyes already because they are completely done now. Now I did think about painting the hand there but it's actually metal um, so it's literally just the face that needs to be the skin tone. Now once the first base colour is done make sure it's properly dry before moving on to the next colour. All of these colours are from Wargames games around you. you can kind of slow down the video if you want to see what I'm using properly. But um, yeah, all war games foundry, make sure it's properly dry before moving on to the next step. And I'm not going over the base colour with uh, multiple layers at this point because we're going to be using all of these different colours to build up the highlights and shades so you don't need to define colour so well. So as with uh, any faces, what you really need to do is just focus on the cheeks, the nose, the brow and the chin. Obviously the lips as well but you have to be careful on some models because their lips are so uh, fine in detail it's quite hard to do so just go slow over them parts so once the second colour is done we move on to the third colour now this is really defining detail now um, now on a lot of models most people will only go up to three highlights maximum um, like I said before you can stop at this stage if you want to um, I just like to take it up to a next and then you know a new level so um, you'll see the results after I think it comes out really nice going up to a high level highlighting up even more than what you normally would um, and again when highlighting just focus more and more on the raised edges leaving the uh, the darker parts that shadow colour that we've uh, initially created just to make that nice smooth blend of colour after the third colour is done I come in with a flesh wash now I do this to add a bit of uh, you know under colour to the skin tone and also tie in all of the colours that we've already used. Now, if you were painting something like a, you know like a really fair skin or um, someone that looks um, you know, less alive than a normal person, then skip this stage and move on to the, the later stages. Um, but this just adds a bit of warmth to the skin tone, which makes it look more realistic. Now, once that's fully dry and like I say in all my videos, make sure washes are fully dry before moving on to the next stage. But once it's properly dry, we can come in and start redefining all of this fine detail now. Now with the shading and also the highlights that we did in the initial stages, knowing where to place the highlights at this point in time is much easier than it would normally be if you only used a few colours. Um, but because the colour is so bright now, you have to be very careful not to kind of go over the top or just focus on the the um, the super raised edges because it will just make the, the the person look like a vampire or you know it just won't look right so 
when doing this first color after the wash take your time with it and kind of make sure that the blends are nice smooth transitions between the original color so that it looks realistic and you have nice tones we're getting to the final stages of the skin tone now and this color is starting to get very very bright so use your finest detail brush now with the best point you have just so you can focus on those extreme parts now what i start to do here is um, put in the nostrils on his nose as well now you don't have to do this if you don't want to but i think it does add a nice bit of detail um, that not a lot of people always do i know a lot of people do do it but on characters it's nice to add that extra sense of detail especially to the face um, of this model so try to do that if you can take your time when you're doing it um, and again focus on the cheek the raised cheekbones and the lips and things like that you can see how much paint I have on my brush at these stages so um, try to copy this as best as you can so that you get as much detail um, when you're painting these brighter stages and also as much control as possible so now we're on the final stage now and you can skip this stage if you want to this is essentially more or less a white or just an off white that that uh, works perfectly with the skin tone that we're using before and i'm just doing the smallest bits here you can see the areas that i focus on the most and i'm kind of holding it so that i'm kind of simulating how the light is going to be hitting his face from from top down so i focus mainly on those areas um to uh, create these brightest highlights. Again, if you want to paint the lips and the uh, the, the chin as well, so that it kind of uh, brings out that detail a lot more. And that's the face done. Now, I wasn't really sure what colors I wanted to paint this model. Um, I know Jamie is obviously part of the Kingsguard, but this isn't his Kingsguard model. Um, cause I'm, I'm guessing he's not his Kingsguard model because he has um, his Lannister shield and also he has a Kingsguard model in the actual Lannister Heroes 2 box so I decided to paint him um, in white but I didn't want the white all to be one similar colour like what the Kingsguard are so for his uh, uh, armour uh, sorry for his cloth around his neck and also on his knees I kind of wanted to have a bluish uh, kind of uh, like a cold sense of uh, white uh, on these areas so I come in with a really pale blue and kind of do a relatively quick uh, base coat now I want these areas to be um, well covered so you might have to go over this with uh, multiple um, layers if your base color is quite thin but um, yeah make sure you get all the areas that you want to now you don't have to do the same thing that I'm doing with this. I just wanted the the white that I'm made, uh, what that I'm painting to be different shades in different areas, so that it's kind of a different area to to look at. So once that's done, um, we can actually start moving on to the white now. Um, I think I did do two colors, like I said, just to kind of uh, make sure that there's a solid base cut underneath. And what I'm doing now is I'm coming with a grey. Um, just to kind of make a nice color for the white to go on top of now this gray hasn't got the greatest coverage over this blue that I've used but what it does do is make it easier for white to be painted over the top of it so um, just do this obviously start highlighting as you normally would obviously leaving the darkest recesses that blue color so you can actually see um, you know what kind of uh, tint of the material I'm trying to create on this guy um, and again when painting around things that aren't already painted or that also have already been completely painted just be careful try to be as neat as possible and it will just make it a lot easier for you in the long run and once the uh, material on his neck is done I move on to the uh, the white part of his knee now I did have a bit of trouble with this color um, so you can kind of see me going over it correcting it um, quite a lot um, doing quite a lot of feathering just to make sure it's as smooth as possible um, and you know like I say in all my videos everyone kind of makes mistakes when they're painting you can see me kind of struggling a bit here but it works out once I kind of work hard on it to to get a smooth blend so just take your time with it obviously white is a relatively hard color so 
just take your time, be patient with it and make sure it's uh, properly diluted so that it creates a nice smooth um, color when you're placing it on the model. So you can see here now that I'm moving in with an actual pure white. Now, so notice how much I have on my brush when I'm doing this. Um, just be careful when you're doing this, take your time. Obviously white is a very hard color to paint for some people. Um, you should treat it the same as any other color. I just think that it is harder to paint because you need to put multiple layers on just to make that uh, you know smooth, bold um, representation of the color. So take your time. This may take multiple layers to, to build up properly. You can see now that the white is actually kind of highlighted properly on his neck that you can kind of get the sense of, although the material is white, it's also a kind of cold representation of white. So I don't want it to, to be seen as blue um, I want it to be seen as white but with those cold um, undertones so with the neck done obviously I kind of come in on to the knee here now you can see what I'm doing is kind of making an initial line so that I can kind of uh, blend and feather out from that part so the line that I'm painting initially is the the main crease on that leg so start with the most uh, prominent uh, highlights on the uh, the most obvious edges or and parts where you need to highlight and then build from there and that's the best way to create a nice smooth blend of color you also notice that I've kind of been quite messy at this stage but um, I do clean it up um, at this point in time just to make it easier for you to see what parts have been painted and what parts haven't been painted and also show you how the white is well represented even though I did uh, start with a blue undercoat now like I mentioned before I do want a lot of the cloth in this model to be white but I didn't want it all to look the same so what I do now is I come in with a much warmer base color now this is a uh, this is called boneyard now it's essentially a uh, kind of sandy color so if you have any color that's similar to it use that as a base coat now you have to be careful when uh, base coating a color like this on black because it's not got the greatest coverage. So don't try to put it on two thick at once. It will 100% need two layers to um, create a strong um, solid undercoat. So when you're painting, understand that this needs to be uh, done in two layers and make a nice smooth, even layer for the base coat so that um, you, know, you don't lose any detail when you're painting. You can see here where I kind of put on an initial bit of paint and then uh, blend it out. And you can still see, you know, you can still see the brush strokes underneath. You can still see the black undercoat. Like I say, that's not a problem. Just make sure you get a nice even coverage over the surface that you're painting. Uh, just to make it easier for you um, in the next stage to get a nice solid colour. As I mentioned before, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with this Jamie Lannister. What uh, the figure was kind of representing. I don't really remember him in the show even having this kind of uh material on his armor he just generally you know had normal armor on um so you can obviously do whatever you want with this to tie him with your army as best as possible and i think white kind of uh makes him stand out a lot more now obviously jamie lannister you, you think obviously make him red but i'm gonna do his cape red so i didn't want the whole thing to be one shade of red i just don't think it would have looked very interesting now this camera angle is a bit hard for you to see everything that I'm doing but I'm just kind of following the cloth all the way around. Um, it's quite simple uh, this kind of sculpting on the cloth. It is, nice de it's not, it is nicely detailed but um, it is really easy to see exactly what needs to be painted that specific colour. So just take your time with it, make sure you get everything properly base coated. And that's that initial colour done for the white now what i do in between this stage is do another base coat like i said um, i'm not going to show you uh, how to do this because it's the same step just obviously redefining and making it bold again as you can see it's not complete 100 percent coverage but it doesn't really matter because obviously you want to be highlighting up to a pure white so make sure it's properly dry and move on to the next stage now what we want to do now is kind of um highlight as you, what you normally would but we're not using white at this point in time we're going as bright as possible with this sandy color. Now, 
this uh, if you don't have a, a brighter sandy color than that you uh, what you use for the base coat then what you can do is kind of mix in 50 50 um, the base coat that you use and then 50 50 white uh, or 50 percent white sorry and um, that will create a nice mid-tone for the uh, for the highlights for you to build on top of now the color that I'm using is obviously a pre-mix color but you can kind of see how it kind of makes that uh, nice blend between the base color and then a nice base color for white to be built up on top of so again make sure you uh, highlight this carefully obviously there's really nice creases on this material so it's quite easy to follow um, for highlighting and obviously for you to see exactly where you want the the shaded areas to be now again i want this to be represented by um it actually being a white color so i'm not trying to leave too much of the base color underneath uh, like the initial darker color but i don't want it to be over um you know over painted and not show that that color so kind of get try to get a kind of mid um blend between the white that we're trying to represent and also the initial color underneath to represent the fact that this is a, a white color but different to the initial um white that we painted on the neck and the knee uh it would be a lot easier if you wanted to paint the whole lot of the white areas the same color but like i said before i think it's nice to uh, show different areas of interest with different color even if you want them to be a same uh sort of tone now this can also be shown by you know if you want to have multiple areas in red then you can do one a darker red then you know one area maybe scarlet so both areas are red but they're, they're different colors and this is essentially the same process but just with white so you can see now um, I'm kind of done it doing a large flat areas uh, highlighting with this bright color and you can kind of see how much of the darker base color I'm leaving underneath so um, if you're struggling with the highlights and what to do then kind of copy me um, and also don't forget to do that under part there I did forget to base coat that at the start but um, you know, I noticed it after checking over so uh, don't forget to do that part as well if you're trying to just do the uh, you know, kind of the long parts of the cloth the same color now what I do now is once that's dry I come in with the white now I only did one color for uh, sorry one layer of the uh, highlight the uh, the sand highlight now you can do two colors of that just to make it a smoother blend i don't think it really needed it for me um but you can do that if you want to and now i'm obviously using white now make sure this white is properly diluted so that when you paint it on the surface it kind of comes off like a milk like consistency kind of like a you know skim milk or something like that but not too runny so that it just runs off the figure um i may do a video at some point to show you what kind of consistency you want paints to be now a lot of people talk about you know this paint needs to be this consistency and that consistency but you don't really see people showing you exactly how the consistency to be and also the consistency of paints um, are not always uh, shouldn't always be the same um, so I think maybe doing a video about that uh, might be quite interesting if any of you would like to see that then comment and let me know if you would um, so anyway, um, like I said before, we're, we're on the white now and painting white you have to be careful of. So start with the initial color on the most uh, raised edges for you to build up the color from. And then what you do is just kind of feather out. And you can see me doing this process right here on this larger surface here. So create that uh, initial line and then blend out the, the white around it. So uh, it creates a nice blend. Now... By doing this, the white color won't be a solid line, um, which is why the white is considered to be a hard color to paint. Um, so what you need to do is wait for the area to dry well enough for you to then build up another layer on top. And if you need to, build another layer on top of that. And when you do more and more layers with white, it makes a more and more solid color and represents the actual color that you're using from the pot on the actual model. Now this obviously uh, is dependent on what kind of 
uh, paint color that you're using some colors are obviously going a lot thicker and have better coverage but generally white um, doesn't have the greatest coverage so it takes multiple layers to create a nice solid white so now that the white is done what I do now is create a base coat for the shield. Now what I do is I use the red that I use for the majority of my Lannister army. Uh, this is the brightest colour. Um, now this is a common theme for my army because what I've been doing is using a bright red for the most common detail. And then use a darker red for the uh, the officers and things like that. So the capes and things like that are darker red. And then the majority of the models... Uh, you know armor and everything like that is a brighter red so I do this for the shield um, now what I originally intended to do was paint the gold but um, I realized that the detail on the shield um, if I painted the gold first it would be really really hard for me to uh, paint a red in so uh, do the red first or whatever color you decide to do for the shield and uh, uh, make that solid before moving on to the gold now I'm not going to be highlighting this up all the way because obviously the gold is going to get on parts of the red whilst you're painting and, and that doesn't matter how good of a painting you are you will get gold on the red so get a nice solid colour on for the red um, obviously don't do it too thick and make sure that there's not any pooling because obviously there's detail but um, make sure that that's properly done before moving on to the next stage so what I do is I start with the base colour of the gold which and uh, it's the same colour I use for every bit of gold on any model that I've done. So um, I begin painting that. Now, Jamie Lannister's armour is you know, said to be um, gilded armour, you know, gilded uh, golden armour. So his armour needs to be gold. It wouldn't look right if it was uh, silver. So everything needs to be gold. So this is a long process, but... It's the same process for any knight model, you know, it's just instead of using silver, you use gold. Um, and it's actually relatively easy at this stage because the detail is so um, obvious um, that um, it kind of paints itself, really. Now, obviously, you want to be very, very careful when you're painting this gold colour around the white that we've already painted. Now, you could have done the gold first if you wanted to. And maybe it would be easier if you'd done the gold first and then painted the white over the top of it. Um, because if you if you uh, kind of get white on gold, then it's uh, a lot easier to fix than gold is over white. But um, I think that the detail is so well sculpted on this model that it's easy for you to kind of paint this gold from black to uh, the complete highlight without getting it on the white. Now, if you're not fully confident on doing this, then try to do the gold first um, or if you've done it in the same way as me just use a smaller brush over the the areas that are closer to the white that you've already painted I think um, painting uh, the gold after the white is a nice way to kind of practice your um, brush skills just to be neat around areas that you've already painted so I don't really think it matters uh, you know what what order you do it in i just think it would be easier you now it may be easier one way compared to another for for specific painters um now obviously there's not really much for me to talk about whilst doing this armor besides obviously making sure you get a nice uh smooth even coverage over the areas and also just be as careful as possible when painting around the areas that are already painted now when I'm painting this model, obviously, I'm kind of looking at all the parts that need to be gold. Um, obviously, you have the shield rim and things like that to paint. And also, you have the uh, kind of detailing on the the scabbard as well. Now, I was thinking about doing that uh, silver. Um, but I just think because Jamie Nance is so rich, um, comes from a you know, well-off family and things like that, that... Um, I just think there would be as much gold as possible on this model. Um... So the only part that I actually decided to do silver is the uh, is the actual saw blade. So you can decide to um, paint different parts of metal on a model different colours if you like to, um, depending on you know personal preference. So do that however you like, and just be uh, methodical when you're painting. So you can see here where I'm kind of going over these areas that are very very close to the 
white that I've already painted that I'm being very, very slow. And also, notice how different uh, my paintbrush looks when I'm, uh, you know, have paint on it when I'm moving over these more detailed areas in comparison to the areas that uh, have a lot more um, room for me to make a mistake. Obviously, on the darker parts of black, like you can see where I'm doing the leg here, I've, I have a lot more paint on my brush. I, and I do have a lot more paint on my brush, but also notice that I'm not kind of covering it with a massive blob of paint. I'm still, you know, I still have a uh, a reasonable amount on my brush um, but just just notice how different uh, my brush looks when I'm painting over areas with detail in comparison to the areas where I'm just kind of blocking in the base color um, and also try to be mindful of how much paint you have on your brush when you're actually painting the model yourself um, you know anyone can have a straight hand but if you have too much paint on your brush then you know you'll still get paint on areas that you don't want it to be on so it's all dependent on how you um, you know how much paint you actually put on your brush yourself to how much detail you can have when painting notice how um, I'm constantly turning the model now it might not be the best uh, viewing angle for you when you're actually looking at this uh, just to see exactly what I'm doing at that point in time obviously the pose is quite um, you know relatively dynamic so with the shield out in front of him it blocks a lot of the painting that I'm doing um, not just on this stage but at later stages as well especially um, when I'm doing more detailed work that I need to kind of, uh, you know, get closer to my face and things like that. But I try to turn it as best as possible for me to see and also for the camera to see, for you to, uh, for you all to see. Um, but yeah, just make sure you're properly turning it. Make sure you get um, everything in uh, that needs to be gold. And obviously, because we've painted the most of the areas that. Uh, you know the cloth and things like that now you can really easily see exactly what parts need to be gold and you know this model a lot of it is gold so um, you know it's more than likely uh, going to be base coated this color at this stage in time now as I mentioned in uh, all of my painting videos so far Try to be methodical when you're doing a base coat so that you um, make sure that you get all of the areas that need to be painted in that color, um, you know, in that color. So it's best to move from left to right or, you know, whatever's the best way for you. You know, if you're left handed, then um, right to left may be easier, depending, obviously, but just try to be as methodical as possible, uh, constantly uh, turning and looking at all the parts, you know, thinking in your head, you know, oh, this color, this color needs to be painted in that area and things like that um, so you're kind of painting the model with your eyes before there's actually even paint on the model now this might sound a bit weird um, but and you know also may come with uh, experience as well but you know some some people can pick up a model and kind of look at it um, before it's even got paint on and go you know oh, I want this color to be there and that color to be there um, but I do think it is quite uh, important to kind of understand what you want to be, uh, what colour. And also, it's also, uh, you know, important to kind of change your mind sometimes. And, uh, you know, if you're painting an area and think, oh, that colour might have too much, uh, you know, let's say oh, too much gold in that area. So I'm going to paint a bit of silver instead, um, just kind of offset that colour. Um, it's good to kind of think on your feet with uh, painting and also kind of be you know artistic with it um obviously within reason now i know i'm kind of uh talking not about the actual painting of the model but um you know it's good to kind of enjoy this as a hobby and um you know express the painting that you actually want to paint now you can paint this any color that you want if you wanted to um you know i painted it white because i've seen some artwork and i also saw a really nice depiction of this model with white um cloth but i i didn't like the fact that all of the white looked the same tone so i changed it um relative to how i wanted my model to look um so you know you can look at this model and go well i don't like the two different colors of white that you've used but i'll do two different colors of red um and that'll make it look better and you know i'm, I'm glad that you kind of you know if anyone does kind of take away from this uh you know uh tutorial and go yeah i like what he was talking about with the um you know expressing the uh the art in, in your own way then i'll be happy with that um 
you know, looking at these tutorials, I don't think, you know, a lot of people do follow word for word exactly what most painters do, but they use it as an inspiration to paint their own models. So I hope that um, that's what I do with any of these tutorials, not just this one, and, you know, any of the future ones that I also put out as well. So you can see uh, on the shield here, going back to the painting, um, the reason why I mentioned earlier that the, the red was important to put on before the gold. Now, you can see just how much of a pain it would have been if I painted the red after the gold. But now that the red is on, or you know, just the base coat of the red, the paint in the, uh, the golden detail is a lot easier. And um, you, know, you can pick it out and leave the red color in the recesses, which is what should uh, you know what should happen when you're painting the shield now there is quite a lot of fine detail on the shield so if you want to be uh, as careful as possible and as neat as possible then get a little bit of, uh, a little bit of paint on your brush on you know the most detailed brush that you have and then just slowly go over the detail now surprisingly I do pretty well with tracing the uh, detail on this uh, on this shield I don't really make that many mistakes but you know there are obviously mistakes on it so uh, just be mindful of uh, that um, if you do get quite a lot of gold on the uh, red then you can just go on the go over it again just you know don't don't be uh, too annoyed at yourself if you make a mistake like I say everyone makes mistakes but most of the time they're very easy to fix so uh, if you do make a mistake just make sure that you wait for the paint to dry before trying to fix it because otherwise it could just make a bigger mess now with the base of the gold done what we now do is use a flesh wash over it um, now I love using flesh wash over gold because what it does is it adds a nice red tint to it but also obviously picks out the detail now you can use any um, wash that you want to um, I don't uh, obviously most people will kind of generally default to using a you know Agrax surf shade or devil and mud or you know whatever kind of brown uh, wash most people use these days but I think that it kind of washes out the color, makes the color, uh, you know, the, the armor look dirty. But the flesh wash makes the armor look, like I said, it makes it look red, but and and also makes it look clean as well. So if you don't normally um, wash gold with flesh wash, then I'll try it. Um, obviously, you can use sepia. It's the same kind of uh, color, really. Um, but I would suggest trying to use that instead if you're painting area of gold, and it will change. Um, how the gold looks on your model for, for the best I'd, I'd say so um, there is one problem to using this though and it's that it doesn't always have the best recess um, pull in so it doesn't always bring out all of the detail in one uh, coverage so you may have to go over it multiple times uh, just to bring out some detail a bit more um, so just be mindful of that. Obviously, you'll notice it more yourself when you're painting your own, but also, um, you know, if you need to go over it multiple times, then obviously make sure the wash is properly dry before moving on to a second coat, um, just to obviously redefine that detail because uh, it may mess up the wash that you've done. So um, you can see how I've kind of uh, gone over all of the gold parts. Um, be very careful of the white here. Now, what did happen to uh, the white on my model is I didn't get any paint directly onto the white, but what I did is I was kind of being very um, um, slapdash with my brush, and what I was doing is flicking small beads of, um, you know, of uh, the wash onto the white, and it kind of made like a, a few dots on the surface. Now, I did end up fixing this, but just be careful of that. Um, if you're kind of being heavy handed with a brush and flicking, you know, flicking it across the surface without being careful rather than actually placing it where you want it to, then it will create these weird dots. So be careful of that. Um, I did kind of get annoyed at myself, but it was a relatively easy fix just by um, kind of going over it with another bit of wire. Um, but if you want to avoid it, just be careful. So with the wash done and properly dried, we can come in with the first highlight color for the gold now. And you can kind of see how uh, the armor now has a nice reddish tint to it. Um, um, and it's not, you know, washed out like brown would normally cause on armor. Now you can see 
because the uh, armor is dulled down by the wash, the bright initial highlight actually picks out the detail really, really nicely. Now, you don't want to be going too extreme with these highlights because the armor should be represented um, in a in a gold color. So, well, that's what I'm trying to represent anyway. So. Make sure that when you're doing the highlights, you're only leaving the most, uh, the darkest recesses, uh, the the initial color, and getting a nice smooth blend of color with the the initial highlight for you to build up a, a good gold from. Now you can kind of see how I'm doing this by creating solid lines and feathering out. Now I think feathering is one of the best techniques that any painter can use uh, it doesn't matter if you're a new painter or a, a more experienced painter feathering is a kind of staple for creating nice smooth blends uh, at any stage so once you kind of get practicing with this uh, technique and kind of essentially if you want to call it master it um, I don't think you know anyone can ever master a certain technique um, to 100% there's always room for improvement on anything but once you kind of get a good understanding with this technique you can kind of apply it really uh, well uh, to to create even smoother blends than you might have done on the previous model that you've painted so what I was talking about with uh, representing the armor being gold you can kind of see now where I've feathered out the, the leg um, and you can still see the darkest tones with the original base color on the wash, but you can also see how I've used the first highlight color to create those nice bold areas, you know, flat areas representing the actual arm being gold. Now it's a lot easier on these more detailed parts because obviously the uh, recesses are darker and there's more detail on them, but it's very important to be careful on these parts because the sculpt of the uh, Jamie has a lot of detail on the armor. So just uh, use a, a fine detail brush um, and follow the lines as best as you can. Like I said before, when you have less paint in your brush, it's a lot easier to control exactly where you want the paint to go. So try to be mindful of this and uh, get as much detail as you can when you're doing it. Now you can see where I'm. Um, turning the model for me uh, for myself obviously to make it easier to paint those lines now I wasn't really sure what was going on at this part of the model um, but you can kind of wing it um, obviously the recessed wash makes it a lot easier for you to pick out the more raised edges and obviously when you're painting highlights you're only focusing on the most raised edges so um, leaving those darker areas that you're not really sure about that uh, shaded color just makes it easier for you if you're not sure exactly what's going on there but when we move on to the actual chest now you can see the details kind of like these swirly patterns um, quite nice nothing too eccentric really so quite uh, you know not, I wouldn't say easy to paint but relatively easy to follow so just take your time with it um, this is obviously a symmetrical piece of armor so you know uh, that it's going to be the same on on both sides so again take your time um, you can see how slowly that I'm painting these areas uh, with the smallest amount of paint on my brush as well so just makes it a little easier for me to control now I know watching this video and doing the commentary that what I'm doing at this point in time is actually holding my breath quite a lot uh, over the detailed areas because it just gives me a lot better sense of control now it's good to practice this if you need to get a bit more control and also you can uh, push your hands together as well uh, I've mentioned this I think I've mentioned this in actually all of my videos that I've done but it's good to kind of drill into you a technique uh, that works best um, you know whether it be how to control your paintbrush better or how to do better feathering or anything like that it's good to kind of as a content creator um, that's done a few videos it's good to kind of show you as the viewer what techniques i'm using often to make my painting look the way that it does so yeah holding my hands together and holding my breath just gives me a lot better sense of control and also 
bracing my arms against the table or whatever surface you're using uh, just gives you you know just some of the best control you'll have um, in comparison to if you wasn't doing those techniques so you can see like I was uh, mentioning before I'm, I'm being very methodical with my painting so what I'm doing is I started from the leg and I work my way up um, now I'm doing the front of the model before moving on to the other parts um, it's just the it's just the process that I'm, I use a lot. You don't obviously have to do it the way that I'm doing. You know, you don't have to paint his left arm first and then, you know, his right arm after. You don't have to do that. But having a sense of uh, order when doing it just makes it a lot easier for you to to do. So you know, leg and leg and arm and arm may be easier than doing one arm, one leg, then his chest. Um, you know, that's what I find anyway. So. Just be methodical with it. Make sure you don't forget every, you know, anything when you're doing this stage. Now, you may forget something at this stage, um, but you will very quickly notice that you have forgotten it because the highlighted armor looks so different in comparison to the unhighlighted uh, unhighlighted armor. So, once you've painted a, uh, you know, say you've done one highlight on the surface and then think you've completely done it what's best to do after is just double check and make sure it's properly done before moving on to the next stage um, and uh, you know I I always do this when I'm painting models and you know you can see at the start of the video like I said I did miss the under you know his kind of elbow uh, there I forgot the cloth but I did find it after actually I didn't recall so yeah just double check um, just makes it a lot easier for you uh, it's quite annoying when you have to go back over something or repaint something that you think you've completed it just takes even longer so the armor on Jamie is one of the largest areas of the model so it does take quite a bit of time to do this stage um, but it is quite um, therapeutic because it's relatively the same thing on one half of the model than it is the other half so it is just uh, you know it's just a bit of time that it takes to do this highlighting but once you do the initial highlight of gold it's a lot easier to do the later stages because the brightest highlight color for gold on most paint ranges isn't always worth painting because it doesn't really bring out much more detail so i do think personally that it is very important uh you know the most important stage of any armor is the first color after a wash because that is what um the armor is representing so t by taking that in mind when you're painting this stage of the armor try to be try to treat it as if it's the final highlight because that is the sense of the armor or sense you know the color that the armor is going to be representing uh most by so treat this as if it's your final highlight to make it as best as possible um and i think your painting you know will, will just be taken up to a next level um i think sometimes it's easy to over highlight or under highlight the color uh, what i mean by that is and it's essentially the same thing if you kind of take one color and highlight a color um you know, or highlight it with a, a a color that's way too bright what happens sometimes is you'll lent you'll tend to focus only on the edges and what it will mean is that the surface will be very very dark and then on the re on the sorry on the edges it'll be very very bright and there won't be any smooth blend um so if you're having this problem, um, what the the best thing to do in my eyes is create a mid tone to to make the smoother blends and then feather out the color. Um, now essentially this is what I'm doing with the the gold at this point in time. Um, you can see obviously the darkest color in the recesses, and you can see essentially what I'm using now is the mid tone to make the surface the color that i actually want to represent the surface to be so this is a gold armor and the color that i'm using now is gold but the what you could call the base coat is actually a kind of reddish 
um, dark gold. So in sense, the mid-tone is actually the color that the surface will actually be best represented by. And then the brightest color is just an extreme highlight, just to kind of pick out um, the, the, the uh, most prominent detail, just so that you had you have a kind of sense of dark color and then highlight, which is natural. So take this in mind when you're doing uh, any highlights, um, especially when you're doing golds or silvers, um, because the mid-tone generally is the color that uh, you will be seeing the most on the model. So with the armor on Jamie done now, uh, well with the first highlight on his armor done now, you can move on to the shield. Now we are being very careful uh, here obviously. I haven't highlighted up the red yet. Now some of you may want to highlight the red first before doing the gold, um, but I think because there's such little red on the shield that I want to be highlighting, I'm going to paint the gold first so that I kind of leave the darkest recesses on the gold uh, on a red sorry uh, that shady color so that I only focus on the parts that need to be highlighted it's just a kind of it's a backwards technique but I think it means that you can focus only on the parts that need to be highlighted so yeah just uh, be careful on the gold here but uh, uh, the red's not done so it doesn't really make that much difference so with the first color done we can move on to the brightest color now you can actually use a silver if you want to at this stage but by using a silver you have to just do very very subtle highlights because otherwise the surface of the gold may start to look silver um, it just won't look right but with this gold here um, I don't even know if it's going to pick up super super well on the uh, video but in some areas it may some areas it may not but this is a super bright edge highlight um, and treat it like one so only do the most prominent edges um, you know around areas of detail that are kind of subtle areas of detail don't really focus too much um, you can do you can't add a bit of you know a bit of pop of color to the areas if you want to but you can see how I'm moving very, very quickly in areas and only got a bit of this brightest color of paint on my brush so that I'm not overdoing it with the color. Now, like I said before, you can see now that the mid-tone is actually the color that's seen the most, shown the most, and that is the color that's representing the armor. So this highlight color is just to add a, f a few areas of detail just for you to you know see the kind of the, the shading, the mid color and the actual highlight just to make it look more natural. But again, you don't have to do this stage if you don't want to. I don't think it makes super, you know, loads and loads of difference, but if you were doing a silver, um, then it would make quite a lot of difference. So just be very, very careful when you're doing it. You can see obviously again, I'm moving very, very fast over areas, just adding a few little bits of uh, visual interest with this color. And that is the gold done now the gold's done obviously we can move on to the red on the shield now like i said before i'm doing this at this stage of time because it means that i focus mostly on the raised edges now there's a very uh prominent ridge in the shield so I, I, what i do is i start by painting an initial line on that area and then feather out the color around around the areas um, just so that it creates an actual realistic kind of blend of color now notice how i'm being very very reserved of how much red i'm actually putting onto this shield and you know focusing only on the most flat areas um, i don't even think i get any red on on the gold on the shield when i'm doing this so it just shows that you can do red after painting the gold to its final level without getting it on just obviously take your time and use a fine brush to get the most control that you can when you're doing it now this red doesn't have great coverage so it does take multiple layers just to get um, the best solid color but you may not have a color you may have a color that's a bit better than mine so uh, just take your time with it, make sure that the colour is solid before moving on to the next colour.
Now this is the final highlight for this red. Um, like I said before, I'm, I use this red on the most basic troops in my army. You know, the, the brighter red uh, is used on the the cheaper troops, or you, you know, used for the like stock items like shields and and uh, Lannister guard armor and things like that. So using a color like this, that's a theme for my whole army, it just ties Jamie in really nicely with them. Um, so again, I'm just focusing on the prominent middle ridge, a few extra details here and there, and then just feathering out the, the brightest red so that uh, it creates a nice smooth blend. And that's more or less the shield done. Now with the shield done, uh, we can move on to the kind of more detailed parts of the model now and what I decided to do is paint this scabbard brown. Now what I was originally going to do was paint the straps this colour. Now this is the colour that I use for the straps on all of my models for the army but I thought because he's a character I'll actually use uh, the brown colour for the scabbard and leave his uh, strappings black so it makes him stand out a bit more now it's obviously not the, the most uh, you know insane little detail but changing these little things for character models makes them uh, stand out a bit more whilst also keeping them in line with the colors that I've used for the army now I also use this uh, brown for the strappings on his arm or for the shield arm and also on the back end for the wood on the shield now you could have painted this red if you want to um, but again I think uh, it just keeps him tied in with the army because I'm using the same colour that I've used for other parts of other models for the army. So uh, by doing this, uh, it, it, like I said, it keeps the, him tied in and also keeps your palette relatively, um, you know, not over the top for different models uh, of the army. So keep that in mind when doing it or, or deciding to choose colours for characters for your army. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier for you to kind of uh you know not go over the top of anything that doesn't need to be and you know because the gold's already painted on the rim i'm being careful uh, not to get in areas you know on the golden areas or even the white because it's quite close to the white as well so just take your time with this um and obviously again turn it so it makes it easy for you and you know like i said before i do struggle to get the best camera angle for you obviously this is the the most uh you know, this is the best area for me to see what I'm trying to paint, but for you as a viewer, it's not the best. But uh, again, just just make it easier for you when you're painting. So once that's properly drier, again I move on to the mid mid tone, and you know it's the same thing as always. Make sure you leave the darkest areas dark, and then focus on the edges. Now, uh, the scabbard is very very simple. It's just two main lines, and that's the scabbard highlight done like, uh, again I turn the model around and you can see how I kind of drag the brush from top to bottom um, on the edge of the surface so that it creates a nice flat line without me actually yeah, having to paint a line myself so when doing edges like this um, that's the best way to paint the edge um, just make sure that you don't have too much paint in your brush when doing a, a technique like this because what can happen is the paint will overlap onto uh, the surface that you don't want the paint to actually be on so just make sure that you only, only have a little bit of paint on when you're doing that kind of uh, technique and it should work perfectly for you now what I'm doing with the highlight on the shield is I'm kind of tracing around the uh, edge just to kind of add a bit of visual interest to it now you don't have to do this if you don't want to um, but I've done it really quick really quickly and you know it just adds a bit of uh, you know just a little bit of detail on the shield but you know, I'm not trying to focus too much on that. And with that done, we're moving on to the final highlight of the Brown Again, this is a really, really quick stage. I'm just focusing onto the areas that I, I did with the first highlight. But again, I'm just leaving a bit more of that darker color underneath so that it creates a nice smooth blend. Or, you know, essentially what is a, a smooth blend and... Uh, that's more or less the the brown areas of this model done. So with that all done, like I said, we're gonna make the straps of Jamie black. Um, this is uh, different to all of the other models. 
uh, but you can do this any way you like but i think black's really nice and very very easy as well now um obviously i primed the area so i primed the whole uh model black but with the painting that I did at the start as well, you know, with the gold, with the white, I did get a few bits of that colour onto the black. So what I did before this stage is just go over the area of the, the strappings black. And now I'm coming in with a charcoal grey just to kind of pick out the edge highlights like I did with the first highlight colour for the brown. Um, it's the same process again. Obviously with black... Um, it's, it's quite hard to make sure that it stays black when you're highlighting. So just do the most obvious parts um, of the surface, that uh, highlight grey colour. And you can see how quickly it is because I'm only doing a few little parts. Now, what I do to add a bit more interest is just add a, a dot of grey onto the most obvious edges. Um, you can see I'm kind of dotting the corners of the the strappings on the scabbard just to kind of show that there is detail on these parts but also still showing at the fact that this strapping is black it's not gray um and again you can see i'm kind of feathering out the uh detail on the strappings there just to show that that uh that part of the strap is kind of being you know there's a more pressure on that area so the light will hit that better um and that is the strappings done nice quick and easy um, you can you can do more or less if you want to, but keeping it as simple as possible, um, whilst also adding another level of highlight, just makes the character models pop out even more. So with that uh, all done, what I decide to do now is paint the sword blade. Now I normally leave the swords uh, or things like that till the end, but what you may have noticed during this whole tutorial is that I've been uh, using Jamie Lannister's hair as a kind of uh, touch point for me to paint the model and also you know the the cape there as well so I can actually paint the sword at this point in time and not worry about me touching it and scraping off any paint um, by accident so you know if you've got a cork or anything like that and you're mounting the model on onto that then um, you may not be actually touching any parts of the model so you could do the cape next or you could do the hair next but I think doing the sword at this point in time uh, is the best for me so I do that now this is the same kind of uh, recipe that I use for all of my silver very very simple just one base color a shade and then a highlight but what I do decide to do on this model is kind of show a bit more how people paint uh, metallic um, you know weapons or armor in a kind of non-metallic metal style so what you generally need to do when you're doing this kind of technique is paint the sword edges in thirds. So one side of the sword will have two thirds um, with a brighter color and one third dark. And then the other side will have two thirds dark and one side bright. So what you'll notice when I'm doing this um, painting is I'm creating an initial uh, block of thirds on the on the blade and then alternating that on the other side of the blade um, so that it kind of looks realistic um, just to kind of get that non-metallic style. Now, I can go brighter and darker if I want to. I don't want to make this look you know, too over the top. So, I, you know, I don't go as bright or as dark as maybe you would when you're doing non-metallic metals, but it's just to show you the technique that you can use on the blade if you want to do this kind of style. Now, you can see there where I kind of made two-thirds... Um, light so the top and the bottom part bright and then feather out the detail and then on the other blade uh other side of the blade i do just the middle and then leave the top and bottom parts dark and then obviously feather out that that color to kind of make it a smooth blend now on the other side of the blade what i'll do is alternate which parts are darker and lighter on the on the thirds of the blade um just so that it it looks more realistic and kind of shimmers in the light if you if you kind of want to if you want to say that now um like i say you don't have to do this on on some of my other models all i do is just leave the groove in the sword that shade color and then just paint the whole blade that bright silver because that just that's just more realistic but 
Um, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. You can kind of follow this technique if you like. It's a, it's a nice technique. Um, you can practice it if you want to and go brighter and darker, like I say, just to make it look more realistic. Now, like I say, it should be dark and it should be light. So what I do with this no oil now is redefine those darker parts with this null oil and kind of feather out the color so that you have the brightest parts and the darkest parts. And you can keep on glazing over this as much as possible if you want to. Um, just to kind of redefine that detail um, and make it look more um, like the non-metallic style of highlighting. More and more glazes and more and more highlights will make this much of a smoother blend. Um, so keep on doing it as much as possible. There's there's lots of really nice tutorials for this and I, I'm thinking about maybe actually focusing one whole video just on this technique. Um, because I think doing it in an actual tutorial for a model that's used for a tabletop game um, isn't really realistic. That's not really the best way because it will just it will take me half an hour just to show you how to do the sword blade. And you know, for for the majority of painters, they don't want to spend that long just to do one technique for the sword. You know, and sometimes it can take even longer than that if it's a more detailed surface. So I may do it in a later video, but here right now it's just a, a very very simple kind of explanation of how people do that that technique but using metallic colors instead of black and gray so once the saw blade's done i now move on to the cape now like i said i'm using the head as the natural main touch point for the model so i use uh, that part as long as i can and then paint that part last so the cape is the second to last part so like I said before, I'm using red um, because obviously it's Jamie Lannister and their house colours is red and gold. So get a nice solid colour on. Again, like I said before, I use a much darker red for the capes and the characters. Uh, so you can see how the dark red is a nice contrast between that lighter kind of scarlet colour. Um, um, in comparison to the rest of my army, so it makes the characters actually stand out really nicely. So get a nice, obviously, uh, solid uh, base coat on. Don't go too thick with the paint. Um, you know, like I said before, you may need to do multiple layers of this colour just to make it a solid base coat for you to work up from. But the recipe for this dark red is very, very simple, really. Um, but again, just make sure that you don't get it on any parts that you've already painted because you'll just have to go over it again, and it's a pain. But yeah, uh, as well, the, the cape is, is sculpted really nicely. There's really nice folds in it. And it's also um, not covering all of the model as well. So you can actually see you know, the back of his armor plating as well, which is actually a really nice touch. You don't always see that on on a lot of models. Again here, just be careful making sure that you don't get in on any of the uh, the white or gold that you've already painted, anything like that. Um, you know, I'm using a relatively big brush here, but if you need to, just drop down a size, make it more detailed brush, and take your time with it. You can see how I'm kind of turning, making sure that I've got all the parts properly base coated and also I decided to do the sword handle red here the same color now you can decide to do that a different color if you want to but for sake of uh, continuity and also making it actually look realistic um, I just paint the sword handle uh, red now you can see here that the recesses of the cape are still wet now generally I like to say to you all do not highlight a color until the surface is properly base coated and dried. But in this instance, because the creases of the cape are so well sculpted, the paint, uh, sorry, the parts of the cape that are still wet are the parts of the cape that this color does not need to be painted in. So, um, you know, some parts of the cape may still be wet on the parts that need to be highlighted. And what will happen is the color will blend in but the parts that are still wet or you know still um relatively really really wet um in the recesses um you just leave that there to dry that color um so it makes it easy for you to see exactly what parts need to be highlighted and uh, you know kind of feathered out 
Now, if you're not super confident with uh, highlighting a color when the original base coat isn't properly dry, then just wait for it to dry. But I think for this tutorial, it's actually good to show you that even though I show you all as viewers that, you know, I'll oh, make sure that the surface is properly dry before uh, moving on to the next stage, that I still paint a highlight whilst the base color is still not properly dry. But I only do it in areas where I know that it doesn't matter that I'm painting the surface because the, the darkest surfaces are still going to be that still drying base colour. So um, I think it's good to show you exactly what I do, how I do it. And you can see how I kind of, you know, the drying colour and the new highlight colour that I'm using uh, blends in together to create an even smoother blend. Now you could call this a wet blend if you wanted to, but I'm not blending the colours intentionally at this point in time. I'm only painting the raised edges to create a smooth highlight so just look at this technique see if you you know may want to replicate it i know a lot of you may may actually do this normally but um just be careful when you're doing it make sure that you only do it on the raised edges leaving the most darkest recesses that still dry in base color uh, it's a lot more complicated on the uh, inside part of the cape here, I uh, kind of just wing it. Um, you know, there's good detail, but there's still areas that are kind of uh, ambiguous as to what parts should be highlighted and stuff like that. But you can see how I kind of, you know, like I said, it's kind of wet blending at this point because um, this highlight color and the base color mix in really nicely to create a smooth blend and, you know, that mid tone between the two colors. Again, make sure you turn the model, make sure that you don't forget to do the. Uh, you know the underneath parts of the cape and I could you know I could have got a better angle here but it's at the end of the clip now so it doesn't really make that much difference now you can see that at this point in time the base coat is still not completely dry but it doesn't matter now it's moving on to the the final parts and you know I'm only doing the most extreme edges now this really really bright color now you can go as bright as you like with this or do as much as of the surfaces you like now this isn't the brightest uh, the brightest color um, but it just redefines the uh, initial highlight that I did with the same color so um, you can kind of see how now that the paints properly dry it just uh, makes a much solid bolder color now again I'm only following the most obvious lines and the cape works really really oh, sorry the, the, the cape is sculpted really really nicely so it's it's very simple to see exactly what parts you want to be painted in that uh, highlight color um, again make sure you use a fine detail brush or you know a brush that's got a good tip so that you get nice straight even lines um, so that the color looks nice and smooth you can see how with a few simple steps that this red cape is kind of uh, you know it, it brings out a model really really nicely and that that kind of input of red in a model which is predominantly you know mostly gold and white it's just a nice striking color again like i said before you can make this any color that you want to obviously your lannister army will probably have its own uh, colors that you've been using so use that color that you've been using to make sure that he ties in with the army you don't want him to stand out and look completely different to the army but you do want him to stand out in a in a different sense you know the fact that he's he has golden armor in comparison to most of the army having red or or silver armor is, is enough but having a different color red for his cape um without it looking too different is just a nice addition to to making him uh you know actually stand out on a battlefield like he actually would now with the uh highlight color redefined now we're actually moving on to the final highlight of the cape at this stage in time um and again you can still see that the the the, the deepest recesses of the cape are still drying but it doesn't matter again you can also see the smooth blend uh, smooth transition of the color um and you know sometimes it is quite hard to create nice smooth blends but this cape is just a gift to paint because it's just the smoothest easiest thing to to paint um it you know it paints itself it's a shame that i didn't get the best camera angle at some parts when i'm painting this cape but 
I do kind of try to fix it as best as possible whilst I'm painting. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry if I, I do kind of miss some shots that, that could be useful. I think it's not that bad, but I'll try better in the next video. But um, yeah, you can see how the you know this bright color isn't too overpowering, but it does create that kind of bright highlight and dark recess. A perfectly smooth blend. Um, you know, and like I say, you can go higher, higher in color or darker in color if you want to, uh, to fit your needs. Yeah, and you can see how I'm turning it, seeing if I'm happy with the blend, make sure it's smooth enough. Uh, if I need to, I'll go back over it with a darker color just to kind of blend in those colors. But, you know, I think I've done a relatively smooth blend with only a few quick stages. And at this point in time, I decided that red cape is uh, is done. So now we move on to the final part, which is the hair. Now, obviously the Lannisters are bright blonde, so I'm using the same technique for this hair as, as I did with uh, Brienne of Tarth in my previous video. So if you've seen that, uh, it's the exact same process. Um, if you haven't, then the colour that I'm using as a base coat is essentially a sand colour. Um, so, you know, when when... Uh, painting blonde there's loads of different techniques um there's i'm sure there's loads of good tutorials out there as well this is just a technique that i've been using sorry a, you know, a recipe that i've been using for blonde that that shows you know that the blonde that i'm representing is not dirty blonde but a bright vivid blonde so sand color again you can see how this kind of color doesn't have perfect coverage over black bit it doesn't really matter um you can just go over it another time if you really really want to just to create that nice bold um, base color for you to work up from. But because the whole model is painted now, you want to be very, very careful not to get it on anywhere that you've already painted. Now, it's not easy for you to paint this, uh, uh, you know, get this paint color on any parts you've already painted because this is at the top of the model. But it is hard, it is easy for you to get it onto the, the skin color. So be very, very careful. Um, I I was quite reserved when painting around the face. I did actually go over it again um, off camera to get the most uh, fine details in. So you may have to get it quite close to you to make sure you get as good a detail as possible. Uh, make sure everything else is properly base coated. Um, and that's the base color for the hair done. Now, like I said, I did go over it twice to make to create a nice solid base color for, for me to highlight up from you can see it now and uh, we come with the first highlight now the hair on jamie is quite well sculpted but in some areas you do have to kind of wing it and kind of create those smooth lines so take your time with this use a nice pointed brush with uh you know good detail and just take your time and move slowly now you want the paint to be relatively uh smooth like you know, like i said before kind of like milk consistency but you don't want it to be too runny because at this stage we're trying to kind of uh show that there are separate strands of hair without going too over the top of it but you know kind of rule of thumb here is you know leave paint a line leave a bit of a you know a same kind of thickness line of that original base color and then paint another line and then keep on doing that same process and it kind of represents there being individual strands of hair now you don't have to do this over the whole model. There are obviously sculpted parts of detail on it, so it does kind of paint itself for you, but uh, that's the kind of rule of thumb when painting hair and highlighting it up when you can't easily dry brush it. Now, I wouldn't suggest dry brushing this hair. It's not detailed enough. Um, dry brushing on plastic isn't always the, uh, the best thing to do either because plastic doesn't really catch brush hairs as good as metal does for some reason i just think that's that's my personal opinion anyway i've never really liked dry brushing over plastic um but um you know that's why i use this this hair painting technique on this model but if the detail was better um then you could dry brush it but i wouldn't suggest doing it over this model especially because we've already painted everything else now and dry brushing can be a, a relatively um messy technique so moving on to the final parts of the hair now it is a relatively simple hairstyle 
Uh, so it's not not too complicated. Again, just making sure that you leave some of that darker color underneath so that it creates a smooth um, transition of color and show that he actually is blonde and not just one solid color. Now with the mid color down, we move on to the brightest highlight now. And we're focusing mostly on the top and the prominent edges of the hair. Now, when doing the hair um you know and painting a very very bright color it's you know it's easy for me to say i'll oh, just just focus on the top parts and the prominent edges but you will notice as a painter with the model in your hand that some parts just won't look right so you may have to go a bit over the top with this highlight color now again the shot isn't perfect but you can see how i'm kind of painting the line and then kind of smoothing out the you know fe again feathering out the the color so that it looks like it's a smooth transition um between colors leaving a darker color uh you know the the original base color underneath or, or the lowest parts of the hair so that the hair looks brightest on top and also you know that jamie lannister actually has bright blonde hair now you can go to a white highlight if you want to just to pick out even more detail but i decided that this was a more than bright enough color uh, for well, you know to represent blonde hair and uh, you know if you want to you can you can do washes and all sorts of things on it just to make more interest but I'm happy with that that um, uh, kind of recipe that I have for the blonde and that's fine now after I painted the whole model what I did decide is that the red on Jamie's cape just wasn't bright enough for me now I have not done this color on all of my other character models, you know, like uh, Sort of Aran and you know uh, all of the other character attachments for the Lannisters. But I use an orange here, a tan, um, and I kind of go over the most prominent lines on the cape, orange. Now, this is not a good uh, clip for you to see, but I do kind of realize it a bit later on that I'm not showing you. So here now you can see in shot where I'm kind of focusing on those most prominent lines and you know, the color's not super, super bright, but it adds just that one extra step of detail. Now when painting orange on capes that are red, make sure that you don't go too over the top of it because it will, rep, you know, the, the color may make it seem that the uh, cape is actually orange rather than red. So just be careful. Um, it you know you can see here I'm kind of following it all the way around. Um, again I got a bit too much on the cape there, but I didn't need to, so I just rub it off. And uh, you know that just adds another little level of the of detail to the figure. And that is Jamie Lannister done. And you know the same with any video, I base up the model and create a nice back rim. And you know it makes it look really really nice. And you can see how that red cape works really really well for him. So as shown at the start of the video as well, here's Jamie in the finished unit. I've decided to put him in here because I haven't actually shown this unit before, but you can see how his red cape offsets him in comparison to the red that I've used on the models. Um, but I've used the same red on his shield as I did on their actual armor. So as always, if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing and sharing with anyone that you also think will like the video. And don't forget to paint and play.